Cannington in Hampshire, southern England, at 6.30 a.m. on a sharp March morning, and Richard Hill is beginning preparations for a centuries-old British tradition. Some would call it sport and entertainment, others would vehemently disagree and call it brutal torture. The dogs already have the scent of the chase and awaits their early morning feed. The horse, as ever, nervous but expectant. A solid English breakfast of eggs, bacon and sausage meat. Washed down with a strong cup of English tea. And something a little less cooked for the hounds. Both are devoured with the same appetite that only an early morning start can bring. Today is a fox hunting day. I enjoy, hopefully, producing a good day's entertainment, because to a certain extent it is entertainment for the ride into eternity, uh, and sport as well. For me, my job is to make sure that we catch foxes, to help, to help the hounds, to help Mr Hill catch foxes. Um, by doing that, hopefully, we will have a good day and the riders and the calf whores will have a good day as well. A good day, however, involves meticulous planning, cleaning, polishing, and making sure that the traditional uniform of the fox hunter fits like a terrier down a hole. Estate agent Peter Inch is one of Hill's regular huntsmen. This is all part of the magic of hunting, is that you, you go out, nothing is planned, nothing is predictable, um, you just don't know. Um, so, you know, I hope from your point of view, we have a good day, but I think even if we don't, you'll probably come back and see that they won't be particularly frustrated or disappointed if we, if we haven't caught them. 10 o'clock now and the hounds, watered and fed, know that the hunt is on. Richard Hill's hunt, the Vine and Craven, is well known in England and for not being the bastion of the upper classes. Fox hunting is not for the poor man, but Richard's outing comes cheaper than most, allowing doctors, bankers and businessmen to rub shoulders with the landed gentry. A warming glass of port. The master of the hunt sounds the off. The hunt trots into light woodland, where foxes are thought to lie. If the hounds can pick up the scent of a fox here, the chase can begin. Landowners and farmers on whose land the hunt takes place actually cultivate natural areas of habitat for the fox and call on the master when sheep or chicken are attacked by the animal who has his very own personalised adjective, sly. The master's intimate knowledge of the terrain casts him as chief tracker.
At this early stage of the day, patience must prevail. And the field, the main body of the hunt, must keep its distance so as not to interfere with the hounds. It's a series of stop and starts punctuated by another warming tot. So where is the fox? The hounds have a supra-developed sense of smell and can pick up the faintest scent. The master helps occasionally by having holes blocked up before the hunt so the foxes have no refuge. But just when things seem to be getting too low key, a fox breaks cover and in a flash the hunt is well and truly on. This is what Richard Hill's clients pay for, a good gallop across open country and a test of their riding skill. At this moment, the office and the in tray are a long way behind. The hunt also has its foot followers, friends of the hunt, who follow and aid the hunt on foot. What have we seen back there? Well, we see that a draw, yeah. mate, we see a fine, and they took the fox away. Yeah. And so what, what do you think is going to happen now? You know, we're well, all stuck here in the, well, in the middle of nowhere. What's happening? Well, the hound and the fox has gone that way. This is a big wood. Yeah. So if we go on down now, we'll, we'll see, see, hope we'll see some more, yeah. I would like to say what you can do. You just uh, Wait here and hope she goes round. Now you could walk way on up through and then wait up the main, there's another main ride up there farther. You can walk for miles in this wood. And that's uh, all the where it goes. I like that better. That's it. You're in the right place some of the time, another time you're not. And that's it, out it goes on a bit. <laughs> According to the British Field Sports Society, in the United Kingdom there are 196 registered packs of hounds, 41,000 riders and over 16,000 hunt followers. Fox hunting, they say, has never been so popular. It's a slice of traditional British life, country pomp and ceremony, for the followers a chance to maintain a rural idyll in an increasingly urban world. In these parts, foxes are regarded as vermin and pests a mortal enemy to sheep and chickens. And fox hunting, the hunters say, is a sensible and efficient way of culling them, whilst providing some sport and entertainment at the same time. The fox, however, might see it differently. It looks as though this particular fox has got lucky, and the hounds are looking distinctly weary. Duty and obedience to the master's horn seem to be taking over from raw enthusiasm and animal lust. If the fox is to die, then the code of conduct set down by the Master of the Hounds Association dictates a quick death by a bite to the neck or shot of the gun and burial thereafter. The tail, paws and head are often kept as trophies. Under the rails. Right-handed. They picked up another fox in there, I'm sure. Yeah, so I've yeah. discovered, yeah. Yeah. So, another fox, and that's the rails. Right-handed. They picked up another fox in there. Yeah, so I've got the eye. Right-handed. Right. Right
A welcome breather, but the dogs pick up the scent of another fox, and the eternal game of man the hunter, animal the prey is on once more. But it seems as though death is not going to visit the foxes today. This one is going to get lucky too. Richard's hunt returns to the farm after an exciting but distinctly unbloody day. So we haven't had particularly good runs, um, but we've, you know, we've been busy. We found five foxes, two and a half race foxes altogether, um, and uh, they've uh, given us a bit of entertainment. And uh, the riding for members that were out today have gone away happy, and so half of my job's been done. I hunt because I enjoy hunting. I enjoy working a pack of hounds. Um, and to a certain extent, I enjoy entertaining a field of riders. Um, when I haven't, when the field have gone home, which most of them go home by half past two, three o'clock, especially on a midweek like today, they've got to get home for the children coming from school and things like that. Um, I haven't got the same enthusiasm to keep going. Um, I'm not a man that's got to go out and kill every fox I find. Many in Britain do not share Richard Hill's view. They regard fox hunting as a cruel, barbarous activity that has no place in modern life. The League Against Cruel Sports, based in London, is the official mouthpiece for this view and spends a great deal of time compiling undercover video footage like this to support its case. Shown here are foxes being dragged out from the ground by helpers and terrier men, aides to the hunt who send their terrier dogs underground to drag out the foxes. These images show that the foxes are not always treated to the official codes of conduct and are either thrown to the hounds or re-released back into the hunt. A different picture of the sport, certainly, and one generally hidden from public view. Yet the crusade to ban fox hunting in the UK has been high profile enough to make the public aware that this kind of activity does go on, and that even if it is the exception rather than the rule, it is not acceptable. Oh, 
Sai desse lado. A second hunt day dawns and a terrierman makes his way to the farm to prepare his dogs for their day. Meanwhile, a group opposed to fox hunting, known as anti-hunt saboteurs, or antis to the hunters, leave London and attempt to track down the hunt. In an age of increasing ecological radicalism, hunt saboteurs have formed themselves into a skilled and mobile protest group. Without too much difficulty, the antis catch up with the hunt. Animal rights activists estimate that of the 20,000 foxes killed each year by hunting, 10,000 of these are killed by terrier men. The two sides are drawing closer to each other and a showdown seems inevitable. The 17th century civil war in England was a bitter struggle between the established landowners, the more flamboyant cavaliers, and the forces of a new order, the more dour roundheads. Looking at these pictures 350 years later, it's not hard to believe that the battle lines remain oddly similar. Different classes engaged in a perpetual struggle for power. Riding shotgun on a VW Golf, a saboteur creates the first of many acoustic disturbances by blowing a huntsman's horn to distract the hounds. Both sides try to evaluate and outmaneuver the position and tactics of the other. And the foot soldiers, or foot followers, suddenly have a very strategic role to play. Well, we seem to be uh, up this track at the back of Snap Dairy, waiting to see the hunt coming along. I think they'll probably be coming along from the left-hand side, or your right-hand side. Um, and with all this mist and fog around, there's not much we can see at all. And uh, these are the antis? Uh, yeah, the yeah they, are, they are the antis. What do you think about the antis? Uh, well, I mean, they've, they've got their uh, thing to do, I suppose, but um, so long as they're not uh, too disruptive, that's the main thing, but we shall see. Yeah. I mean, I they, mean, ca they can be, they can be uh, difficult at times. Right. Cruel, perverted uh, people who enjoy killing for pleasure. That's what we're here to, to stop the killing and their perverted pleasure, you know, really, which is 90, I mean, 85, 90 percent of the population is obviously against it. So, uh, you know, we've got good justification in a de democratic society to do what we're doing. But we are always perceived as being, being wrong, you know, but we're the right guys, we're the decent guys, you know. We, don't, we, don't, we can't justify killing on the, on the scale that they are doing it. So we're here to stop it. We're hunt amateurs, you know, <laughs> protesters, really, against these blood sports. So we're getting off our asses, out of our houses, and actually doing something constructive to try and stop this inhumane pursuit of an animal through torture, you know, just for their pleasure. And that's what we're here for. And we feel very strongly about this, and we shall continue to do it until it stops. And that's it, basically. <laughs> All right? Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. Canned dog barking is another way of causing confusion and distracting the pack. What you can hear at the moment is a gizmo. That's um, a table of hounds in full throw, which is uh, played at an amplified rate. 
and it confuses the hounds, makes them think that there's another pack of hounds onto a fox. So uh, it's very effective, even at, even at long range. With saboteurs now appearing in all directions, it's looking increasingly difficult for the master to successfully continue the hunt. But confusion seems to reign for the hunter and the police, who have now arrived on the scene, albeit in a low-key way. The antlers are calling with the horn at the top here. Whether Richard's actually called the hounds back, I don't know, to be honest. We don't know exactly what's happening. Yeah. The hunt's just made up across the field, and they've got some of the anti-hunt saboteurs following them. The antlers are just trying to disrupt the hunt. OK. Did you well, see it, Fox? I didn't. No, I didn't see one go away from the wood. All right. Conflict though there is, what is striking is the way that any violence is studiously avoided by each side. Both are keen to present themselves well to the camera. What's happening at the moment, we've got a, a whole mob of anti-hunting people following us. There's about 20 to 30. They've obviously organized themselves. Probably somehow they found out that you were coming to film. So they're going to use that opportunity for their own publicity. These people are not necessarily anti-hunting. They're anti most things, be it the roadways or, or whatever at, at the moment. And we are in the south of England where we get more than our share if you went to uh, the, the fells or Scotland or down in Devon, there's far less. This is an urban area in general. We're not all that far from Swindon. And so we do get more than our share from time to time. We try to cause no problem. We, we try to do our best um, to ignore it, really. It's the only thing we can do. With the saboteurs right in amongst them, the hunters have no choice but to abandon the hunt and head back to the security of the farm. Today in rural England, a Mexican standoff. But although both sides have kept the peace, a barely concealed anger lurks just beneath the surface and on other hunts often explodes into savage anger. Feelings run deep, two different tribes passionate about their own world view. As the hunt master Richard Hill well knows, the hunt saboteurs are not going to go away. And despite what the British Field Sports Society may say about its popularity, it's hard to believe that fox hunting has any long-term legal future in Britain. Nevertheless, it is an unmistakable image of England, represented by a group who, in a democratic society, feel they should be allowed to pursue their interests without harassment. Once again, the fox might disagree. The end of the day, and the hungry hounds have to settle for beef rather than fox. A refreshing rub down for the horse. The hunt costumes may look glamorous, and the clients are certainly paying to be part of a traditional spectacle but the hard graft goes on behind the scenes, seven days a week. Richard, Claire and Peter all earn their living from fox hunting, 
as do 33,000 others, the society claims. How long that may continue is open to doubt. They have a right to peter, peaceful protest, um, which on the whole today, it was. Uh, they tried, what annoys me is when they try to call hounds onto roads, which all the state were trying to today with the use of the horn, which is what I use to control the hounds. Um, it confuses the hounds and they don't know quite where to go, especially if they can't see me. Um, on the whole, they're not, never too bad, but there was quite a lot of them today. At the end of the day, what I'm doing is, le is legal. Um, and it annoys me because I can't do my job properly. And that, so that sense makes me angry. Are the days of carefree fox hunting numbered? Is it the end of the road for Richard and happy days for the foxes? Somehow one thinks the sly old fox may have the last laugh after all. <laughs>